I'm Chris Hansen, right now on Crime Watch Daily from here in New York. A striking 21-year-old goes on a girl's getaway. She was a ball of fire. Three days of drinking, wakeboarding, and cliff diving at a lake party outside of Nashville. But it ends tragically when Lauren Agee is found dead, face down and floating. And how she died is why we're sitting here. Something happened up there. Her friends claim she fell out of this hammock down a steep cliff. It's officially ruled an accidental drowning. But could it be murder? I believe that there was foul play. I know she didn't drown. People that drown sink. A strange imprint on her chest that could hold a bombshell clue. And why have all three people with whom she was partying gone silent? They all pled the fifth. Today, Anna Garcia investigates the mystery at the link. These three kids are covering it up. And tracks down the last people to see Lauren alive. What can you tell me about what happened? Right now. Andrea Isom, sir, with Crime Watch yeah. Daily. Jason Mattel with Crime Watch Daily. This. I'm Elizabeth. I'm here with Crime Watch. I'm Michelle from Crime Watch Daily. Anna Garcia from Crime Watch. Is Crime Watch oh, Daily. Stay off my property. We'll find you again. We always do. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Hansen and welcome to a special edition of Crime Watch Daily. It's a picturesque vacation getaway in beautiful Tennessee, but some say amidst the rippling water and jagged rock cliffs lies a tragic mystery. Anna Garcia is here now with our all new investigation. Hey Anna. Chris, it was supposed to be a fun camping trip with friends to a popular wakeboarding event that took place over three days. But sadly, Lauren Agee would never make it out alive. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. We're going into a death trap. They are the words that will haunt Lauren Agee's family for the rest of their lives. If there was anybody who deserved to still be here, it's her. The beautiful 21-year-old and three of her friends canoeing in the dark toward a remote Tennessee campsite, 90 feet straight up. It's a cliff on both sides. But Lauren will never make it back down alive. He said, um, I just want to tell you that your daughter didn't make it. She's dead. Oh, you're going. You're going. Ooh, do you want to go? Lauren Agee was the one every girl wanted to know and every boy wanted to date. Brains, beauty, and a personality you couldn't help but notice. She was a ball of fire. Tell me a little bit about her growing up. Well, Lauren was a very, very outgoing child. She had all the first place ribbons. She was, you know, just really, really good, you know, as far as sports and dance. It sounds like she was so full of life. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Allison Bivens says her sister Lauren's passion was dancing. She even appeared in a music video. Uh, we've got tons of uh, home videos of her standing in front of a television, dancing to music videos, um, dancing to music in the car, singing in the car. The raven-haired beauty was in her second year of college studying criminal science. She had even met the guy she called the one. Everything in her life was great. She was living here at home with us. She had a boyfriend. I mean, she was so happy. And then she died. And how she died is why we're sitting here. Right. Her mom, Sherry, says the nightmare started with a simple request. Lauren came down that day and said, um, Mom, there's this thing called Wakefest I want to go to. And I said, honey, what is Wakefest? Wakefest, a wet and wild three-day party on Center Hill Lake, two hours outside of Nashville. Hundreds of fans cheer on pro wakeboarders during the day and party all night. And then camp out on houseboats and cabins around the local marina. So I said, who are you going with? And, and she said, well, Mom, I'm going with Hannah Palmer. <laughs> what concerned you? Well, Hannah was a friend that she was only here or around Lauren in between boyfriends. 
So when Hannah wasn't busy and needed somebody to hang out with, she would call Lauren. And so that being said, you know, I said, Lauren, okay, you're going with Hannah. Where are you staying? And she said, well, we're going to stay in a cabin. But things changed after she got there. A change that would also forever change Sherry's life. As a mom, I just really had this really bad feeling. And then she started to walk away and I went, no, 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 I want one more hug, one more hug. And she came over and I just squeezed her really tight. And I said, Lauren, be careful. Lauren and Hannah were primed and ready to party, documenting their car trip on social media, writing, can't wait for Wakefest. Do you wanna go? Wakefest lived up to the hype, and Lauren lived up to her reputation of being the life of the party. And we were drinking together. She was telling people I was her sister, her twin. Cassie Franks went to high school with Lauren. They bumped into each other on the docks. But Lauren definitely was, I mean, alcohol was in her system. You could tell. I mean, she was having a good time. Soon, Lauren and Hannah hook up with two more friends, Hannah's new boyfriend, Aaron Lilly, and one of his buddies, Christopher Stout. Who were these people your sister was with? I did not know them. You don't say they were friends then. From my understanding, Chris was a stranger to uh, my sister and Hannah. Christopher and Aaron were known thrill seekers, spending the day wakeboarding on the lake. But Sherry was shocked to find out her daughter tried something far more dangerous, cliff jumping. There's a bunch of cliffs there, and the kids were just like jumping into the water. The cliffs at Center Hill Lake are terrifyingly steep, and the water below is filled with hidden rocks. If you throw yourself off of it, you can miss the rocks, and you can land in the water. But Lauren's jump doesn't go as planned. Uh, the kid said that she hit the back of her head and, and, you know, maybe she was knocked out for a few seconds and or maybe it was a concussion. Despite the scare, Cassie says Lauren seemed fine later that night. That's her waving at the camera inside a bar in the marina. <laughs> Hannah, Aaron, Lauren and Christopher hang out at the bar most of the night. That's Aaron getting into it with his ex-girlfriend, Cassie. And Cassie says Lauren also made it crystal clear she was not romantically interested in Christopher Stout that night. I feel like she was just having to put up with him. She was Hannah's wingman. Around 2 o'clock in the morning, the four head out. It's bedtime. But instead of sleeping on one of the houseboats or in a cabin, Lauren learns there are new sleeping accommodations. It's up on a narrow cliff filled with danger. I could see that 100% that she did not want to be up there on that cliff. And who can blame her? The cliff is a stomach churning 90 feet above the lake on one side and a 45 foot drop down on the other. Lauren did ask if she could go with my group, but I just didn't, we didn't have any more room. That was the very last time I saw her. Cassie was scared for Lauren. She spent the night there a few years earlier. I never went back up there after I got down. And the most terrifying part, where you sleep once you're up there, in a hammock called an emu, tied loosely between two trees, dangling right out over the water. I and mean, I remember saying that to myself, if this rope breaks, I'm gone. And the campsite bathroom? If you had to hold onto a tree and lean backwards, I mean, it was straight down incline. Once at the base of the camp, it's a brutal 90 foot trek straight up using a thin rope. This really is steep. I mean, I don't know how anyone could do this in the dark of night and do it drunk. I don't even know how someone can do this in the daylight and sober. Once at the Clifftop campsite, there's more partying. Around 3 a.m., Aaron and Hannah head toward the only tent, while Christopher and Lauren bunk down together in the hammock. Do you find it weird that she would have jumped into a hammock with someone that she didn't know very well? Or I just don't think she would have stayed with him specifically if she knew who he was. This picture of Lauren and Christopher in the hammock is believed to be one of the last ever taken of Lauren. And that must really hurt your heart. Well, Lauren wouldn't have chosen to be with these people. 
When the sun comes up in the morning, Lauren is gone, nowhere to be found. Up next, what happened on that cliff? This gentleman called me and said, I need to tell you what I witnessed. And what he says changes everything. And these three kids are covering it up. And I'll believe that till I go to my grave. We're back with more of today's story, Mystery at the Lake. Lauren Agee was on a camping trip with friends. After a day of partying on the lake, they all fall asleep. But when they wake up, Lauren is gone. Anna Garcia is back now with more of our all new investigation. Lauren Agee has literally fallen off the face of the earth in the middle of the night. I immediately thought there's no way that she of all people could go missing because she does not go unnoticed. The striking 21 year old last seen sleeping in a hammock 90 feet above Center Hill Lake in Tennessee. Something happened up there. Lauren, her high school friend, Hannah Palmer, Hannah's new boyfriend, Aaron Lilly, and one of his buddies, Christopher Stout, had been partying all day at a popular wakeboarding competition. She was outgoing, bubbly, just full of life, like she didn't know a stranger. Chris Yarchuk, a police detective from a nearby county, was working security for the event and remembers chatting briefly with Lauren and her friends. And what did you think of the people she was with? They were quiet and reserved. They weren't nearly as outgoing as, as Lauren was. Yarchuk can't forget the nervous feeling he had watching Lauren and her friends canoe over to the cliffside campsite around 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, I saw the four of them leave together. Hours later, Lauren's friends say she was gone. When do they say she disappeared. They say when they woke up Sunday morning, her shoes, her cell phone, and her stuff, basically, was under the hammock. Here's the baffling thing. There are only two ways to get down the cliffside camp. The first option is by rope, down a treacherous drop through a maze of trees, bushes, and, oh yeah, snakes. The second way down, even more dangerous hurling yourself off the other side of the cliff, hoping to hit the water 45 feet below while missing the jagged rocks buried beneath the surface. That they could have uh, said, hey, our friend is missing. Can you help us look for her? They didn't do any of the things that normal friends would do. Instead, Hannah told authorities, oh, she must have went back to the bar. And that's why they never reported her missing. They just went on about the day and, and wait fest and everything. But two hours away in Nashville, Tennessee, Lauren's mom hasn't heard from her daughter, and she's a nervous wreck. At what point did you panic? Sunday morning. I started calling and calling and calling and just like, you know, it was a little text. It's like, hello, hey, you know, and there's no answer. Sherry had no idea she'd never speak to Lauren again. Two fishermen find Lauren's body in a cove. When you got here, where was she? Uh, she was just ahead of us here, uh, face down. Officer Yarchuk was first alerted by Dina and Harry Elder, who work at the marina. So only four people knew that there was a body back there. That's correct. But before Yarchuk can even get to Lauren's body, something bizarre happens. Aaron was in a canoe paddling over there. And he says to me that, you know, that could be one of our friends over there. And I think it's odd because we haven't publicly announced anything about a person in the water. So if only four people knew that there was a body back there in the cove, how in the world did anybody else know that? I don't know how they knew that. I came around the corner uh, in the pontoon that day and started right back in the cove. And you know, before I even got halfway there, I could notice the bright pink color in the water. Lauren's body was out of Yarchuk's jurisdiction, but he has the feeling this could turn into a crime scene and instinctively makes mental notes. Yeah, I noticed a bunch of trauma uh, and blood in the back of her head on her left side and her shoulder area. 
Is that the kind of injury that you get if you fall and land backwards and hit your head on a rock, or is that someone slamming your head on the back of a rock? Um, depending on how you fall, it could go either way. Officer Yarchuk also notices what he believes to be a bite mark on her chest. I suggested that they do a rape kit on her. So all we could think of was that somebody's life was getting ready to change. And the mom was probably at home cooking supper, waiting for the family to get together. And we knew that wasn't going to happen. Sherry Smith is that mom. Nearly 12 hours after her daughter went missing, Sherry gets the devastating news from a DeKalb County Sheriff's deputy. He said, um, I just want to tell you that your daughter didn't make it. She's dead. My gut told me, I said to him, first statement, where are the people she was with? And he stepped back and he looked at me and he said, we have them, we're questioning them. All three are briefly questioned, then released. They think she fell in the middle of the night and drowned into the water. The coroner finds Lauren's blood alcohol level to be twice the legal limit. No rape test is conducted, and her body's never swabbed for DNA. With that, the sheriff closes the investigation. And they've ruled it what? Uh, accidental. Uh, actually, the incident reports his drowning. Did you believe that was possible? You believe law enforcement. You do, but my gut feeling was telling me different. Lauren's story may have ended here, but there was also something eating at Officer Yarchek's gut. That somber vision of Lauren floating in the water. Yeah. Do you think she drowned? How do you think she died? Uh, I know she didn't drown. People that drown sink. That's right, floating. And the autopsy shows there was no water in Lauren's lungs. There was also something else Officer Yarchuk couldn't get out of his head, an autopsy photo. There's an imprint on the stomach. It's that odd 45-degree triangle right there. Up next, that weird triangle hits Officer Yarchuk like a bolt of lightning. He suddenly remembers where he's seen it before. That's the only thing that was in their use that would make that mark. This weekend, hundreds of boaters will flock to Center Hill Lake in Tennessee to enjoy the water with friends. Sadly, for the family of Lauren Agee, the popular spot is the site where their daughter died. Once again, here's Anna Garcia. Lauren Agee fell 90 feet to her death. The medical reports show blunt force trauma and possibly drowning. It's ruled a tragic accident. Case closed, according to the DeKalb County Sheriff's Department. Two words, it said she's dead. But Lauren's family is having a hard time believing it. But she didn't have any water in her lungs. No. Uh -uh. So that right there is a major question. Sherry Smith's suspicions aren't just based on science. She says it's something much stronger, mother's intuition. I didn't like the people that she, you know, rode there with. Sherry claims Hannah Palmer, Aaron Lilly, and Christopher Stout didn't grieve, mourn, or shed a tear for her daughter. In fact, they reportedly stayed at the lake and continued to party. Chris Stout put on his uh, Instagram the day after Lauren's death, best weekend ever. Who does that? And days later, when Sherry buried her daughter. No one came to the funeral. What do you mean? Well, Hannah, her parents, Chris, Aaron, none of them came to the visitation or funeral. All the people who Were last there. saw her alive. Right. Yeah, what a stab in the heart. Sherry was beginning to wonder if there was something these three were hiding. As a mom, I just really had this really bad feeling. 
Dina and Harry Elder, who work at the marina across from where Lauren's body was found, were feeling the exact same thing. What stands out? To me, that day was the behavior of the individuals. Their whole concern was about going home. And what Harry and Dina found most disturbing, their stories kept changing. How many versions of what Lauren supposedly did did you hear? Well, I heard that, you know, she had a fight with her boyfriend. She wasn't up there till all of a sudden she was up there. I think she got on a boat with a man. That was another bizarre comment. And I went, mm -mm, no. But what really raised a red flag happened right up on that cliff from where Lauren supposedly fell to her death. You spot a fire that night? Do you have any idea who was burning what? All I know is that you know, when they released the boys, they went back over to retrieve their stuff, and then that's when they spotted the fire. So if you put two and two together, is it possible that maybe somebody was burning something they didn't want someone to find? But remember, they were camping out. It could have been a campfire. Hannah, Aaron, and Christopher may have been behaving badly, but the DeKalb County investigators maintain the three had nothing to do with Lauren's death, saying it was simply a tragic accident. But Chris Yarchuk, a former police detective who was working security that night, completely disagrees with his brothers in blue. What do you believe is the most suspicious thing about where Lauren's body was found? How it got there. Officer Yarchuk is so convinced the three know more than they're saying, he took it upon himself to record audio as he interviewed them shortly after Lauren's death. Aaron Lilly, who built the campsite, tells Yarchuk he thought Lauren went to meet an old boyfriend. I honestly wasn't really worried about it because I didn't think anything had happened. I didn't think anything would happen. Christopher Stout, the guy Lauren was sharing that hammock with, gave Yarchuk this theory. Think she went back after y'all went to the cliff? I honestly don't know. My honest opinion is she got up to go to the bathroom and, and slipped. And then it's Hannah's turn. Remember earlier she told Deanna and Harry she saw Lauren leave with a man on a boat. Just listen to what she tells Yarchuk. I know she probably went to pee, but she didn't have her shoes, she didn't have her keys, wallet, phone, and she like would not leave without that stuff. We took Officer Yarchuk back to that cliffside campground to prove or disprove that bathroom theory. By Hannah's account, there was an area for peeing that they used, which was by the tent. And he says there's no way Lauren could have slipped and ended up in the water. For someone to fall from this area, to fall down through all these trees, off a ledge to a flat area, off a ledge again to another flat area, um, it's just not possible. The bathroom theory didn't pass, but what Officer Yarchuk couldn't get out of his head was that strange triangle imprint on Lauren's abdomen, and then it hit him. It was an imprint of the tip of a canoe. You think the canoe made that mark? Their canoe? I, I mean, looking at it, looking at what was caught on camera film uh, in the pictures, they're, uh, that's the only thing that was in their use that would make that mark. Yarchuk believes Lauren was already dead when she was placed face down on the canoe. We've darkened the triangle on her abdomen. Yarchuk believes that's an indentation made by the bow of the canoe. With the imprint on her stomach, um, it looks like her arms and shoulders and head were put into the canoe. It looks like maybe her feet were dragging. Officer Yarchuk was not part of the sheriff's department which investigated Lauren's death, so he couldn't reopen the case. He did, however, reach out to Sherry and advised her to take a closer look at the last three people to see Hannah alive. And she did. So the guy in that hammock was bad news? Yes. Christopher Stout reportedly is currently sitting in jail for a parole violation and has two DUI charges pending. He has a rap sheet this long of numerous offenses. And Aaron Lilly has a history of DUI and domestic abuse. We got into a domestic dispute. He hit me multiple times. 
Cassie Franks is Aaron Lilly's ex-girlfriend. She also happened to be at Wakefest that weekend. Whether it was a drunken accident that someone, you know, hurt her and they didn't mean to hurt her, but they hurt her. But I don't, I still don't think she fell off the cliff. And Cassie hits us with something we never saw coming. But I found the pictures uh, from when he hit me. Cassie says she's never shown the pictures before. The photos show her bruised and battered. She claims after Aaron beat her. Lily and Cassie were both charged with domestic assault, but the charges were dropped. So why is she showing them to us now? The reason I didn't in the beginning is because I thought to myself, what does what I went through have anything to do with, you know, Lauren's death? Maybe it does. Cassie offered the pictures to the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office. She says they declined to look at them, maintaining there was no foul play involved and Lauren fell to her death accidentally. But could a real dummy prove them wrong? Up next. We had a 105 pound dummy that we took up to the top of the cliff and we threw it. And what did you find out? I don't think she fell off the cliff. Tragedy on the cliff of death. I'm not gonna stop until we have the truth of what happened to Lauren. Lauren Agee's distraught family still struggling for the truth about how she died. I definitely don't think that we have heard the 100% truth of what happened. There are far too many questions and concerns. The 21-year-old went to the all-weekend party called Wakefest in Tennessee and never returned home. The official report says Lauren died of blunt force trauma from falling off a steep cliff into the lake and possibly drowned. But her mother, Sherry, thinks otherwise. How do you drown without water in your lungs? That is kind of fishy, isn't it? It doesn't make sense to me. Theoretically, you can drown without water in the lungs. It's called dry drowning. Getting nowhere with the sheriff, Lauren's family hired private investigator Sheila Wysocki to conduct her own inquiry. And she says what she discovered could blow this closed case wide open. The authorities say that Lauren's death was an accidental drowning. What do you say? I do not believe it was an accidental drowning. I believe that there was foul play and Lauren was placed where she was found. I think Lauren was dead before she was placed in the water. Why do you say that? Because of her injuries. When you look at the cliff and you're there, there are two possibilities. She fell off one side, which is a 90 foot drop, or she went off the other side and there is no way her injuries added up to what's on her body. So if she was without her shoes, the bottom of her feet would be torn up like meat. It's not, there, there's just one little injury on there. The bruising in her back does show that she fell, but it doesn't show that she fell off the cliff. She probably fell off the ledge to another ledge. So to test that theory, Sheila performed what she calls an unscientific yet dramatic test. Chris Yarchuk did a similar test for our Fox affiliate in Nashville, tossing a dummy the size of Lauren off the cliff from several spots surrounding the campsite. You can't get to the water. Reporter Dennis Ferrier was there to witness every attempt. Carl Lewis couldn't get to the water. The best long jumper in the world could not make it to the water. You would be tied up in trees and rocks. Between Yarchuk and Sheila, they tried the dummy test close to 50 times with the same results. We dropped it um, and we took it to different areas to see if it could hit the bottom of the cliff. And what did you find out? It couldn't, it didn't, it never did. When you fall, you have arms and legs. You don't roll like a ball. So there are arms flailing, legs flailing. There's no way she would have hit the water. There's no way she did hit the water. 
Then Sheila says she used a milk jug to track the currents in the lake. What we know from witnesses and um, science that the currents were going the opposite direction that day. So she wouldn't have ended up in that cove. The currents were going the wrong way, the opposite way. If they were going the opposite way, then would she have ended up somewhere else then? She would have ended up by the marina. To demonstrate her theory, Sheila took me out on a pontoon boat. This is where they were camping. That cove over there, the furthest cove, is where she was found. From above, you can see the layout. Here's the campsite. This is the cove, 700 feet away, where Lauren's body was found, and the marina is on the other side of this sliver of land. Sheila says if Lauren fell into the water, the current would have pushed her away from the cove toward the marina. The current was being pulled this way because the dam and the water, so it was coming the opposite direction. And something else irks Sheila. The medical examiner never did a rape kit on Lauren. Is that unusual? I believe it was. The sheriff said she had a tampon in so she couldn't be sexually assaulted which infuriates me. Why does it infuriate you? You can be raped with a tampon in. And remember that mysterious triangle mark on Lauren's chest and stomach? Some say it looks like an indentation from the bow of a canoe. After going through Lauren's case file, we had some questions for the sheriff's department, but they declined our request for an interview. Instead, the sheriff issued this statement. The Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency assisted the sheriff's department detectives in loading the body onto a TWRA boat to transport the body back to the boat ramp. Our investigation determined this mark is an identical match to the TWRA boat storage locker lid where the body was placed face down during transport to the boat ramp. Now, the sheriff said that that imprint on the stomach was from the rescue boat that was used to recover her body. You see a boat with a cooler, you see a boat with a trap door, it's a box which is square 90 degree corners. This was a 45 degree. Angles, steep drops, a body face down. For the family, nothing seems to add up. Next. What can you tell me about what happened? We look for answers from the people believed to be the last to see Lauren alive. Now to the conclusion of today's all new investigation, Mystery at the Lake. Did Lauren Ag accidentally drown or was it foul play? Lauren's family is convinced that people who were camping with her know more than they're telling police. So our Anna Garcia tracked them down to get their side of the story. Lauren Agee's mysterious death at the lake is an open and shut case, at least to the sheriff in DeKalb County, Tennessee. But for Lauren's mother, Sherry, the case is still wide open. What has to happen in order to learn the truth? Somebody has got to come forward. I think somebody has got to give more details of what happened that night. All I have is two little itty bitty paragraphs on a police report. To dig out those details, the family hired private investigator Sheila Wysocki. What was it about this case that made you want to take it? I looked it over and things didn't add up. Who do you blame for her death? I'm not sure exactly who, but I believe that somebody up there hurt her. The autopsy report says Lauren died from blunt force trauma after a fall off a cliff. That's where she and some friends built a campsite in the sky. But Sheila says she believes Lauren's death is no accident. I believe something was happening to Lauren and she was either trying to get away or fighting. And that's where her head was hit, blunt force trauma. And I believe that's how she actually died. Do you think that she hit her head as she was falling or someone hit her in the back of the head? I believe she went backwards trying to get away 
hit her head and fell down the ledge. She has bruising on her thighs. She has, her nose was broken. So there are a lot of injuries that absolutely don't add up to a fall off a cliff into the water. She's got broken fingers, which would be consistent with a fall, but it's also consistent with somebody fighting. What's the significance of bruising on the thighs? The significance to me of the bruising on the thighs initially was someone putting their knees on, on a person holding them down. Was there anything else on her body or anything else that suggested the possibility of a struggle? Yes, her throat. She was hemorrhaging in her throat. Now, that doesn't mean she was strangled because, you know, her eyes weren't um, bloodshot. So, but there is hemorrhaging that wasn't listed on the autopsy. Well, how'd you find it if it wasn't listed? Because it's in the pictures. If that's true, then who could have done it? There were several hundred people on the lake for Wakefest, but there are only three believed to be the last people to see Lauren alive. Her friend, Hannah Palmer, Hannah's new boyfriend, Aaron Lilly, and Chris Stout. Is it possible that this happened in daylight? I mean, is that, because the thing is, we don't know who's telling the truth. So we can't really know where Lauren really was last seen alive. We know who's not telling the truth because the stories are changing. You think they're lying? I do. And that's why Sherry filed a wrongful death suit against the three in an effort to force them to talk. But there's just one big problem. And when we filed the wrongful death lawsuit and we have a list of questions, they all pled the fifth. Okay, come on. No. I mean, you plead the fifth. You plead the fifth because you are afraid of incriminating yourself. It's not a hard question. Did you physically touch or harm Lauren? I plead the fifth. And according to the PI, someone has been making some strange postings on social media about Lauren's death. And a lot of people have been posting comments that are not very uh, nice and quite ugly. And some people have been posting false information. The information is also coming from an IP address in Florida on the same street as Hannah and Aaron. Coincidence? I don't think so. Crime Watch Daily went to Florida for answers. So what can you tell me about what happened? We tracked down Aaron and Hannah to their house in South Florida, where they moved one month after Lauren died, and they called the cops on us. Aaron, Hannah, is there anything that you want to say to Lauren's mom? Can you tell us anything? You were the last people to see Lauren alive. Aaron, Hannah, and Chris have never been considered suspects or charged in connection with Lauren's death, and a judge dropped Hannah from Sherry's lawsuit. And now this mom is left in the dark about her daughter's death. Her key question still unanswered. What really happened up on that cliff? I'm her voice, okay, as her mother. I have to be her voice, and I have to pursue the truth because I owe that to her, right? I'm all she had, and she would expect nothing less from me.